Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today on the Divine Messages podcast. My name is Karina, and I am a psychic medium out of Calgary, Alberta. It feels so good to be back on the mic again. I took a little bit of a break. I went away to Costa Rica with my family, and I had a really much-needed vacation. And I'm so happy that I did because it gave me a purpose and a reason to come back and get on here and teach all of you everything that I can possibly teach you. So I wanted to do an entire episode that is all about spiritual protection. So many years ago, I had a friendly debate with my Reiki master. I had asked him if I needed spiritual protection before doing Reiki or mediumship. And he had said, as long as I didn't have any fear, I didn't need any sort of protection. But even back then, as a newbie to all of this stuff, I felt that there was some sort of reason behind what I had heard about spiritual protection. And honestly, as I opened up to my abilities, I was terrified. I was terrified because my whole life I was being bugged by spirits and not all of them were nice. And I grew up fearing everything to do with the other side. Some of them absolutely terrorized me and it was just awful. So I found it extremely impossible to do this work and not have fear. I think for my Reiki master, he may not have needed the protection as much. He was, and I sadly say was, because he passed a year and a half ago. But he was this big, burly guy from New Zealand, and I have a feeling that the negative spirits didn't mess with him. But for me, on the other hand, well, I was scared of my own shadow back in the day, and everything affected me deeply. So when I started doing spiritual work, I was guided to protect myself. When I first started doing Reiki, I read over 35 books in the first few months, I was so fascinated by everything to do with spirituality. I needed to learn everything that I could, and I trusted my guides to guide me to the books that were right for me. And I really couldn't get enough of this new world. I would sit in bed reading until sometimes 1, 2 o'clock in the morning with one eye open. And the best thing that happened was that I experimented with as many things that I could, and I soon discovered what did and did not work for me. And the one thing that did work the best was spiritual protection. I found that shielding my energy allowed me to do this work safely. But not only that, I also found that spiritual protection helped to keep my family safe as well. And so my Reiki master may not have found that he needed or wanted spiritual protection, but I did. And I found out how important it really is for all of us, especially the sensitive ones. And since he has passed, I know he now agrees with me, as I've talked to him many, many times. One of the other main reasons for doing this episode, besides a follow-up after the last episode about being vulnerable to negative energy through meditations, is that I recently allowed a family member into my energetic space, believing that they were in the light, and I didn't protect my energy or my one son's enough, and we both psychically got hit really badly. It was so bad that we ended up having horrible, horrible nightmares, and my son was full of anger, rage, and depression, and I knew exactly where it had come from, and I had to go right to work to clear it. It was awful. I could feel the energy in my home shift. I could feel that something dark and awful was lingering, and I smudged the entire home from top to bottom and cleared myself, but I didn't really clear my son as well. And that's when I realized that this dark energy was surrounding him. It was trying to take him over, and I knew that I needed to do everything to stop it. And I could see it in his eyes. He had dark circles under them. He looked absolutely miserable, and I could feel that he wasn't okay at all. Now, a lot of people could chalk that up to him just having a bad day, but as a psychic and a healer, I knew that it was way, way more And that really is the case for so many people. And yet not many understand the energetic world and how psychic attack can affect everything about a person. You see, I let my guard down, which I don't do very often at all. But this was family, and I didn't protect our energy or the energy in our home as I normally do. And because they carry a dark force energy within them, it got out and it attached to us. And yes, I know this all sounds very scary and unsettling, but I'm talking about it all for a reason. I think of all of the people that have no idea why all of a sudden their child or someone that they love or even themselves become depressed, angry, or really just not like themselves. Psychic attack is very real. Vibrations are real. 
And when lower vibrations are within someone or surrounding them, if you aren't protected, you can either have them attached to you or linger around you, causing complete chaos in your life or around your loved one's lives. I've said this over and over in many different episodes. Not everyone is from the light. Not everyone has your best interest at heart. And many people have negative spiritual attachments and they don't even know it. And as grateful as I am that I can see and feel these negative energies, it has become exhausting at the same time. Life is much easier for me when I am constantly shielded in spiritual protection. It means the less clearing that I have to do and the less energy that I have to fight off. The crazy thing is that for weeks I had anxiety, something that doesn't happen very often anymore. But not only that, every single day I was seeing 911 and 555 on the clock. And when I see those numbers all the time together, I know that my guides are trying to warn me about something. The problem with that is that I don't always know what they are trying to say to me. I can't see for myself or my family. I've described it before as this. A surgeon may be very good at performing a surgery on someone, but they can never perform the surgery upon themselves. So that's why every day I had anxiety. I knew they were trying to warn me of this person's energy, and deep down I knew it. And yet I still let them in, and I didn't fully protect my family. So you see, I fully believe in spiritual protection. I believe that when you protect your energy, the dark side doesn't have a chance to enter. And at first I was furious. Furious for many reasons. I was so angry at myself for allowing this to happen. I allowed them into our lives, and it was an awful thing to have to clear. I was angry that I had to go through another terrible energetic lesson as I've been through so, so many and I'm sick and tired of them. But here I am doing a whole episode about all of it. And that's when I know that again, I was supposed to go through this so that I could share and teach all of you of what not to do. And that is what this life is all about. Lesson after lesson. Now, the other thing that I would like to talk about is our gut feelings. I talk about listening to our intuition over and over again. And yes, we all fail to pay attention from time to time, as you just heard me explain how I failed to trust mine in that family situation. But there are other times when I get that strong gut feeling that something bad could happen, and I do my best to do something about it. So recently, we took that family holiday to Costa Rica, and two of my son's best friends came with us. They are 17, and my son is 15. And I was amazed and so grateful that their parents trusted us that much that they allowed their children to go to Central America with us. I'm not sure who was more excited about it, my son or myself. I think I was excited because I knew that my son was going to have the time of his life and he would remember this trip forever. But as we got to the airport and we were checking in, a little bit of panic came over me. All I kept thinking was, Oh my God, I'm in charge of someone else's babies in a foreign country. I'm responsible for keeping them safe, happy, and protected. And you know, I told them all that the only one rule that I have is that they could go to the pool by themselves as it is only four feet deep, but that they can never go to the beach without an adult. I've lived down there and I know just how strong the rip currents are at that beach. I've heard of so many drownings there. And even when I go with my boys, I yell at my older son and my husband not to go too far out. And every single time that we swim in it, I say a prayer of protection. I have an immense amount of respect for the ocean. And I have had two very scary near drownings myself there when I was in my 20s. So I know that this particular beach can be intense. Anyways, they all agreed to the rule for the ocean. And I took them out many times by myself. And we all went out boogie boarding. But as we went out, I put us all in bubbles and surrounded us with millions of angels. I didn't feel nervous at all. I felt protected and so much so that each time we had an absolute blast. And then one day mid-trip, I made a plan to go for the day to the spa with my girlfriend who lives there. I needed the break to recharge as I usually do. But that morning, I had a bit of a nagging feeling. I knew that my husband would be taking all the boys to the beach that day alone. And normally I wouldn't have much fear, but that morning I couldn't shake the worry. So before I left to the spa, I sat in meditation and I prayed. 
I asked for all of the kids to be protected, and I called on everyone that I knew on the other side, as well as all of the spirits that I have helped over the years to protect the boys. Not only did I shield them, but I double shielded them. I used everything that I had. I felt really good about their protection, so I went to the spa in peace, and I had the best time. But when I got back, the boys had a story for me. My son had told me that one of his best friends, the one who had had a broken thumb from a snowboarding accident prior to our trip, had been out on the boogie board when all of a sudden he got hit with some big waves and lost the boogie board and was being sucked out by the current. In that moment, I sat there with my mouth wide open. All I could think of was that my guides were trying to warn me to ask for extra protection around them as something tragic could have happened. As I say all the time, We must give permission to our guides in order for them to help. They can intervene if it's not our time, but they also cannot prevent certain accidents. And I know that might sound confusing, but the best way that I can explain it is to just ask to be shielded and protected every day of your life for your family as well. I knew that his friend was very shaken up, but I didn't want him to be afraid to get back out into that ocean. So I said a few prayers for him and asked his guides to take his fear away. And sure enough, he went back out into the water the very next day and was happy and enjoyed the ocean for the rest of the trip. But also one more thing happened and it happened the day before we flew home that I feel that I should share. Our good friend who lives down there has a side-by-side recreational vehicle and we had asked him if he would be willing to take the boys on a rip up in the mountains and he agreed. He's such a great guy, and all of the boys just love him. And anyways, he pulled up that day to the building, and I was up on the third floor looking down at them as they were all getting buckled up, and I had this weird quick vision of them really needing those seatbelts and harnesses. I don't really know how to explain it other than I just knew that they were going to need those harnesses. So what did I do again? Yep, that's right. I shielded and protected them with extra angels. It's also crazy because my youngest son wasn't going, and he also looked at them and kept saying, be safe, okay? Be safe, okay? He's the one who always gets the strong gut feelings and premonitions. So when he was saying that, I was like, okay, time to send in the big guns, and I did. So they happily got on their way, and Nick and I took my other son and his buddy into town for ice cream and shopping. But when we got back to the condo, my Wi-Fi kicked in and my phone started blowing up with a ton of messages from my oldest son. I had even seen that he had called at least five times and I instantly got that sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. So I called him right away on FaceTime and the first thing that he says is, Well, Mum, we lost the brakes on the side-by-side as we were coming down the mountain and we had to crash into the side to stop the vehicle. And thank God I could see them all on FaceTime, so I knew that they were okay. But I was shaking, as he was telling me. The front end of the vehicle was smashed right in and needed to be towed. He showed me the other side of the mountain that was a scary drop-off, and I felt sick. Thank the Lord and the angels that day for keeping them all safe and without a scratch. So again, you see, when we get that weird feeling that something could go wrong, instead of going into fear about it, shield and protect call in all guides and angels. They give us that weird intuitive gut feeling for a reason. And when we give them permission to help us, they will do everything that they can. So I don't know if any of you follow or know of John Edward, the medium out of New York. So he used to have that TV show called Crossing Over with John Edward. He's appeared on numerous platforms that include being a guest on Oprah, The View, Dr. Phil, and more. Anyways, when I started this spiritual journey, I read many of his books. I was so fascinated by everything that he said. I've even seen him live twice and once on a Zoom group reading. It was in the last live group that I had gone to that out of hundreds and hundreds of people, my father came through with messages for me. I was just amazed. I have a lot of respect for John Edward and how he works, but my favorite thing about his group readings is that right at the beginning, He asks all of us to envision ourselves with a beautiful bubble of white light. He then goes on to explain to all of us how important spiritual protection is. I used to have extreme social anxiety. I hated going anywhere in public. I could see and feel all the negativity in the world ever since I was a young girl. But ever since I started to use spiritual protection, my life became so much easier. 
I can go out in public and be invisible and not see any of the negative stuff out there. And even if I do see it, the spiritual protection prevents it from attaching to me. And so when I do let my guard down and I'm not protected because I've forgotten or I've just simply been lazy about it, I become extremely vulnerable to all the negativity out there. And let me tell you, it isn't fun to be psychically attacked at all. And again, most people don't even know that it's happening to them. All they will feel is an instant change in their feelings. I have a whole episode all about psychic attack. So if you ever want to know the signs, please have a listen. So I want to leave you all with this today. I cannot even begin to express the importance of spiritual protection. It doesn't even matter if you aren't an empath, healer, or sensitive. Each and every single one of us are open vessels to energy. Think of how much better it would be to live with such positive energy surrounding your aura. Think of how much physical and mental harm you would be protected against. So what do you have to lose? Why don't you just give it a try? It's really simple. All you have to do is ask your angels and guides to surround you with the most beautiful bubble of white light, then next a pink bubble for love to surround you, and then a dark purple bubble for spiritual protection. And lastly, ask your loved ones on the other side to send millions of angels to surround you and your loved ones on earth. It really, really works. Thank you all so much for joining me today on the Divine Messages podcast, and I truly hope that this episode will help you all to understand how important spiritual protection is. If you would like to book a reading with me, I can be reached at www.divinemessages.ca or on Instagram at divinemessages333 or at the Divine Messages podcast. Please bear in mind that the perspectives and opinions represented in this podcast are based solely on the Divine Messages interpretations. We can in no way be held responsible for the actions of our followers.